Good evening, good evening. This is Hampley III, Pastor of Village Church Fellowship. I want to welcome you to our Wednesday Bible study. Today we're going to be going over Jesus' teaching, Lesson 105 in the book. Oh, that's not. <laughs> Living for the Kingdom. Living for the Kingdom provides 115 lessons based on the commands of Jesus. And this is in fulfillment of his great commission in Matthew 28, 18 and 20. Amen. So we're almost done. Amen. We're getting close to the end. Amen. So I appreciate you all just following with us and joining with us. If, you, if you're if you new to following us or joining us, just feel free. I have everything, just about all the lessons on YouTube, or you can follow just in here in Facebook and kind of drill down to it. I'm just going to take a moment just to share my page and then we'll then we'll get started. I pray that you're doing well. I pray that all has been going good. Join us for Bible study. You know, as, as we walk, you know, as, a, as we walk with the Lord, there, he finds us in so many different situations and situations he allows to come into our lives. And uh, I'm appreciative of the lesson. Sometimes uh, we don't always want the lesson and we may want it to be shorter than what it is, but there's always a purpose that's behind it. So you look at, uh, when we look at, um, you know, uh, James 1, amen, you know, that God has a purpose for all things, amen, and many times just to develop us and build us into the image of the Son. God bless you, Marlon. Pray that you're doing well. So with today, we'll start there. Uh, just just give you an update. We have the materials for our food pantry. They're at the church. Yesterday, I had to cut the grass front and backyard. It took me a few hours. So at least the items are at the church now. So at some point, we'll begin to to unpack and to, to build them up, clean that area up. We'll send some pictures up. But in the meantime, we'll continue to work on our $20 PB&J challenge, right? I was doing some numbers, and I found out that in America, right, that there's about a eight, about no, not eight. There's about 582,000 individuals that experience homelessness on any given night. And this was according to some a census, uh, according to a report last year. And when you think about it, we have the number of churches that we have. If, we, if one person from each church, now I want you to understand that one person from each church was to go and do the $20 PB&J challenge, providing 84 sandwiches, then we would be able to feed all 582,000 individuals who experience homelessness for three meals for 18 days. That's a lot. Just with $20. One person in one church. And then across America, there are about 213 million people. You know where I'm going with this now. There's 213 million people who identify as a professing Christian. If each of them took the, 20, the PB&J $20 challenge, right? If they took the challenge and just one time, we would be able to feed that 582,000 people. We'll be able to feed them for 28 years, three meals a day, 28 years. Now, that's not the goal for just the 20 years, just doing doing that. Part of it is one is to take care of the least of these, right? These brothers and sisters to take care of those that are less fortunate, the invisible. That's one thing. Second is to get all of us as believing Christians to get into outreach and to be the hands and feet of Jesus, literally. Then, as we are out there and being the hands and feet, we would think of, many of us would think of more ways that we can help. That's when we begin to add additional resources beyond the $20. And when we were out last week, given just last weekend, giving out the, uh, uh, the 84 sandwiches, we gave out water as well. And when we're doing that, I'm thinking like, how can we do more of this? How can we expand even greater? Right? There was an opportunity I had even today. I'm sharing this just to give you examples, not to try to boast anything. But even today, I gave out a few sandwiches by the library and the YMCA. And as I'm giving them out, most of them had food. They had they laid out. They had uh, two liter soda, like most of them had two liter sodas. And they had like sandwiches already. They had uh, donut holes already laid out. And But the problem the issues is affordable or how either affordable housing or some type of transitional housing. So that's what's on my mind. That's what's on my heart, right? I'm starting with $20 
sandwiches I'm spending twenty dollars on today was just two dollars because I bought a couple of, of loaves of bread and I already had peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and all the other and the sandwich bags and gloves. But it's this desire to say, what more can I do? That's what this twenty dollar PB and J challenge is meant to do. Like each of us say, what more can I do? Now we need to be safe, but it's like just one little bit can make a great difference. Amen. So you will see more information about that. I will. If most of you know me, I am more of a, I will formalize something and I'll try to nationalize something. So, and this is in accordance with what the Lord said, because as you were showing me, as, as, as I had the vision, God's given the mandate to teach this to other churches. So this is the goal. So we have a desire. We have, we have a name. We'll come up with the name. We'll share the name a little later website and a little, we want to make a one minute video that we can share with other believers that they can share with their congregations or with those who are in charge of any type of outreach ministry. All right. And so then if we can get this in every church, that's the goal, every church, if one person and they can do it as a church or they can, someone can do it as an individual, but I can do this. I can pack up 84 sandwiches in my car and maybe drive and hand them out. Right. We got to be safe. Remember, we got to be safe. So make sure you travel in numbers and you're you're looking around about the surroundings. Maybe you go to a certain area like this isn't the area I need to be in right to be safe. But thinking about that, how can we do that? So you'll see a little bit more information, a little bit more formal. That's kind of where I'm at. But really just starting with what we have. All right. We don't have you don't have to have a big budget. Just need twenty dollars. Amen. OK, so let's get into the teaching and it's going to be lesson 105 and then we're going to get going. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this time you've given us, Lord God. I thank you for this week. I thank you, Father, for the highs. I thank you for the lows, Lord God. There is an intentional purpose in each place that you may find us in, Father God, that you allow for us to experience, Lord. Allow us to see the low places, the opportunity to grow, opportunities to learn to trust in you and not in other things and other people, the nouns. Lord God, sometimes we have to be broken from that. So I thank you, Father God, for those opportunities that you give us to learn how to depend and trust on you more than we trust on things and people and places we can be. We love you, Father, and we thank you, Lord God, and we ask for your continued help. Open my heart and mind, all of our hearts and minds, to receive this word today that it may challenge us, correct us, convict us. But most of all, Lord, may it bring forth a commitment to you, Father. We love you and we thank you so much. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, so we're in John chapter 7, verses 14 to 18. I'll read it briefly, and then uh, we'll get started. So I'm in, Matt, I'm in John 7, verses 14 18. All right, so let's get in there. So in verse 14, it says, Now about the midst of the feast, this is the Feast of Tabernacles, so I'll get into it in a second. Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled saying, How knoweth this man's letters, having never learned? Jesus answered and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. So in the beginning of the chapter, so just kind of we as we roll into it, right? That's I think this is a part of our, I think it's as our due diligence as as disciples of Jesus, right? Jesus said, "Make disciples all of nations." These are students, learners, and pupils. I think it's our responsibility per se to understand the context that we're reading something. I can easily just kind of read these verses and go with the questions, but it's important for us to look at. Okay, what was going on during this time? Okay, so during this time was the Feast of Booths, or called the Feast of Tabernacles. So that's what we'll find around verse 1. And Jesus didn't go initially because they were looking to kill him, right? they like, okay, look, I'm looking to get after Jesus, right? It says, after this in verse 1, Jesus traveled around Galilee. He wanted to stay out of Judea, where the Jewish leaders were plotting his death. But soon it was time for the Jewish festival of shelters. This is in the New Living Translation. So this festival, just to give you a little bit of information. Hey, God bless you, Rose. We pray that you're doing well. It's also known as Feast of uh, Booths or Sukkot. It is the seventh and the last feast that the Lord commanded Israel to observe 
and one of three feasts that the Jews were to observe each year by going to appear before the Lord, um, your God, in the place which he shall choose. So it typically took place on the 15th of Hebrew month, um, Tishri, and this was the seventh month on the Hebrew calendar, usually occurs around late September or mid-October. The feast begins five days after the Day of Atonement, and at the time, the hall, far, the hall far harvest had just been completed. Right? It commemorates so the, the festival of tabernacles, of booths, and the, and the NLT has shelters. This commemorates the Israelites' 40-year journey through the wilderness and their dependence on God's provision. Amen. During that time, right? They didn't, their clothes didn't wear out. They had food, right? Their shoes didn't wear out. That's a long time, right? We don't, we can't have shoes too long before they wore out, but you're talking about 40 years and your, and your clothing don't wear out. God provides for you. So during this time, they built temporary shelters and spent time outdoors to remember and celebrate God's faithfulness. Amen. Now think about how you can celebrate God's faithfulness in your life for a moment. Think about that in your day. How we can because it, it it's it's too you know it's it's good for us to give thanks to him all times, right? At all times, whether we eat or drink, we do all to the glory of God. We give thanks in all things, right? So what would that look like for you? What it would it look like for you in a day to give thanks and to celebrate God's faithfulness to you. Maybe it's something that you write in a letter, you tell someone, right? Maybe it's something you, you, um, it may be a letter you write someone, it could be in your diary, it could be while you're driving, that we, we create this, um, this attitude, right? That we give, we have an attitude of gratitude where we continually, right? Where we're continually giving thanks. Because like, this is in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. I want to make sure I get it because I get that one confused with another one. So, you know, in all things, give thanks for this is the will of God uh, in Christ Jesus concerning you, right? So, so then when you have this attitude of gratitude, when you have this attitude of thanksgiving and thankfulness, think about how that shifts your entire day and how you go about it and how you look at things, how things that would normally make you upset or, or you cause you to worry that you're not worried about because I'm thinking about the goodness of God and his faithfulness and where we're learning to trust in him more, just as the Israelites had trusted him. We're trusting you for daily, during those 40 years, for a daily substance. Right, this manna that falls from heaven. My clothes haven't worn out for forty years. Think about that. Some of your clothes you may have. Right, once you get older, right, you you start wearing like the same thing for decades at a time. So that that almost made me real for some of us. Like, man, I've been wearing these jeans for thirty years. As long as I can fit in them, I'm still going to wear them. Come on, y'all. Like, I have some shoes right now. If I can still fit them shoes, them shoes don't wear out on the bottom. I'm gonna keep wearing them. God's faithfulness, right? But it, it's not working like that for me. But Having an attitude of gratitude would be so powerful for us because so often we will find the smallest, minutest detail of pain, drama, or frustration, and we will blow that thing up four, five, a thousand times larger than it was. It is out of a hundred things, God could be blessing you with 98, and you and not just you. I speak for me too. I do that. I would make a big deal out of the two things so large that I just put all this other stuff out of reach. And I don't even look at the 98 things that God is doing. So I want to change my attitude so that I have more gratitude. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for what God has provided. I'm thankful for the opportunities and the relationships I have. I'm thankful even if there's some tough ones because somewhere in there, it may be a reflection on my attitude, how I respond back. Lord, is allowing me this opportunity to reflect your image and character in difficult times and seasons. Lord, I thank you. It's, this situation is teaching me how to trust you more because I need to. And all of us could. right? I need to learn that. Thank you, Father. I'm learning how to be more perfect. right? I'm learning how to be more like you. I'm thankful for your faithfulness. He's faithful to you and me because we be wilding. A lot of us are wilding out in the day. 
And so he's so faithful because he says, look, I want you to be with me forever. And because of that, I'm going to allow these things to happen and to come into your life to help you. So you can count it all joy because I'm still going to be faithful, right? When it says in, in, in Philippians 1 and 6, he who began a good work shall continue the work, see it to completion, right? Until the day of Jesus Christ. So he's begun this good work. I am faithful. God is like, I'm faithful to finish it, regardless of what you're doing, regardless of whether or not you're going along with the plan or not. I'm going to continue to be faithful to you. And that's a promise. Amen. So not, not to go too far off there, but let's take some some time because I don't think we do that. Even for me, right? Today, I was really emotional. I was talking to, to my family. We are on a Facebook chat about a retirement ceremony and possibly having one. I was thinking about my dad and I, I, I didn't really want to have one because of my, my grandparents and my dad won't be there. And I was really emotional about it. But then it makes it, it causes you to think about the faithfulness, right? God's been faithful. He kept me. He put different people in my life to help me along the way, even when I wasn't faithful. That 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 you know I was I was helped, right? So then how can I do that for other people? Because I have this attitude of gratitude. Amen. All right. So let's get into these questions. Question number one. It says, "What were the people at the feast in Judea saying about Jesus?" Right. So this was in verse twelve. So now when Jesus Jesus doesn't initially show up. So initially he was asked if he was going to go, right? His brothers had asked him. Jesus' brothers said, hey, you know, leave here and go to Judea where your followers can see your miracles, right? And then uh, you can't become famous if you hide like this. If you can do such wonderful things, show yourself to the world. But his brothers didn't believe him. But he said, look, right now it's not, it's not my time to go. So he didn't go initially. But the Jewish leaders were looking for him, right? They're looking to get after him. But then he shows up a little bit later. So in verse 12, as he shows up, it says there was a lot of grumbling about him among the crowd. Some argued he's a good man and others, he's nothing but a fraud who deceives people. We can find that today. We can find among the, the groups of people today, if you serve people that live on your street or that you work with, some people will see him as Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. Some people will see him as a prophet depending on their background. Some people will see him as a, as a shrewd man. Some people will see him as a fraud who deceives people. Some people, this, this may go a little bit later, but some people may see Jesus as a fraud who deceives people because we're not living right. Because they've seen the fraud, right? Or, or, or there's been some alleged things that's happened, the fraud and embezzlement within the church. And it may have been like somebody, it may not even be somebody they know personally. They, they could have watched that on TV. Watch a televangelist or somebody. And like, see, I knew that Christians ain't right. Like, Jesus ain't nothing about nothing. Right? I ain't watching that stuff. Right? He's a fraud. So they put on Jesus what someone else is doing. Instead of keeping like that was that with that prayer. God is still faithful. The Lord still loves. It was something that they may have done. And we'll get to that toward the end. That was their motives. And their intentions were not the same as Jesus was. Amen. So then, so we see the same thing happening today, but we, going back to the story, right? What did he say as he taught in the temple, right? Verse 13, I'll read verse 13. He said, but no one, right? When they, when they looking around, <laughs> right? No one had, had the um, courage to speak favorably about Jesus in public for they were afraid of getting in trouble with Jewish leaders. Right. So Jesus says, look, I'm not going to show up. I'm not going to go down there. Right. Y'all go ahead. And then goes a little bit later as he's teaching. Now people see him. Nobody's going to say anything, even if he's, he's dropping some jewels, some knowledge. Right. And they're like, nah, I ain't saying nothing. I don't want to get thrown out. I don't want to get thrown out of the synagogue. Right. I, I want to be I want to keep my 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 Jewish heritage. I'm good. I don't want to get in no trouble. Midway through the festival, Jesus went up to the in the temple and began to teach. The people were surprised, right, when they heard him. How does he know so much when he hasn't been trained? How does he know so much since he didn't, since this person didn't go to seminary? How does this person know so much? Because I saw them and they ain't got their GED. How do they know that? Right? We begin to question people because they don't look like what we believe they should be. But God can always do a work. Come on, y'all. So then it says, where did Jesus' doctrine come from? It came from God. That's where it comes from. It comes from God. 
So then when you think about how can someone know if someone's doctrine is of God or from himself? Now, there's probably, this is probably a, a two-parter. So, but we'll get into this one. That'll probably be by number five. So what we see is it's going to be the end result of the doctrine that they give. So what is the result of what they're speaking about? So what the end of what they may be speaking about may show that they're trying to glorify themselves rather than trying to glorify God. It's an extremely slippery slope. And a lot of people, a lot of people get on, I'm gonna give, I've given this example several times with myself, but it's very easy to get there if we don't have the right motives and we don't check ourselves or allow the Holy Spirit to check us, right? But so we understand that because we, we can see, right? Because some people will seek after, they'll go about it, they'll inquire their own means to glorify themselves using God's name. They'll use God as an ends to their means, right? I'm using it so that I can find success in church. I'm finding it so you can look at me anytime that you are preaching or you're teaching, you're doing anything, you're saying, look at what I'm doing. You're seeking your glory. Just like I just told you earlier, when I'm speaking about the, when I'm speaking about the, the $20 PB and J challenge, I'm not doing it so that I can say, Hey, look at me. And I said that because in the scriptures it's talk about, if you, you know, don't do things just to be seen of men, right? Don't let know what your left hand, uh, your, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. In this sense, I know that I'm not going to get credit for that. I'm not trying to, right? I have another mandate from God to teach people this very thing, to teach them to, to volunteer and to give of their time. So my purpose is completely different. I am still trying to give glory to God ultimately, right? That's the purpose. But if I'm trying to do it so that, hey, look at what I did. Look at our, I, I made this video. Look at me. Look at the likes I want to get. Bring more attention to me. And like I said, sometimes it's just that. Sometimes, you know, as all of us, or very many of us, want to be loved, appreciated, and accepted. And many of us will may do things that may be illegal. Some of them are unethical. They may not be illegal, but it's unethical. And some of it may not be in accordance with the responsibilities placed upon us. Right. As a minister of the gospel, there are times when I would use the scriptures when I was younger. This is like we're talking about the 90s, late 90s, right, where I would use scripture incorrectly, not in its proper context in order to draw more attention to me. People would be like, oh, look at what he said. Oh, that was good. Look at that. Right. It wasn't scripturally sound. That moment I'm seeking my glory and not his. I'm using his name and his word incorrectly, irresponsibly maybe unethically, right, irresponsibly, so, so that I can get something for myself, rather than saying, God, I give this all to you. All glory goes to you. Amen? So then when I look at this glory, it's about receiving honor, it's about receiving praise, and it's about see receiving worship. Amen? So those are the things that I'm seeking after. But to understand this, let's go to Matthew 15 real quick, right? Because what's, what's important for us it, for us to listen to what people say, to see what they do, and then understand that their actions will expose them. All people, all people, sooner or later, will expose themselves and what their true motives are. People can't hold, you can't just fake stuff for 20, 30 years. Sooner or later, sir, ma'am, they will expose where they really are. It may not be today, and it may not be tomorrow. But they will, or God will expose them. But Matthew 7, it says, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravaging wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Uh, it says, a, tree, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, uh, and uh, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Amen. So now when we think about this very thing, we understand that a person, right, will sooner or later expose who they really are. We'll see them by their fruit. A lot of people are very slick talkers, right? Some people even use scripts when they're doing things. 
But sooner or later, your actions will betray you because they will betray your true intentions. They'll show where you really are. Sooner or later, people expose where they really are, especially when they get comfortable and they believe they're getting away with something. They're getting away with it. Oh, I don't have to fake anymore or fake, don't do anything. We do that with when we're dating, right? When you're dating, you act a whole different way than when they when you got them. By the time you marry, you show something completely different. Oh, I can relax now. I can be me, right? When you're on your best behavior when you're dating, trying to hold on, trying not to show all those bad qualities until you get them home and you get the ring on it, right? And all of a sudden, you're wilding out and they're wondering who this is. I'm like, I don't remember none of this stuff prior to. All right, so that's something for y'all that, that be dating, folks. All right, I already got my woman. <laughs> All right. Okay, so when people speak of themselves, what are they after? This is question number four. It says they're after their own glory. Amen. They're after their own glory. He who, And this is in verse 18 of John 7. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true and no unrighteousness is in him. So in, in question five, it says, how can no unrighteousness be within somebody? And this is seeking the glory of God. So let's go to Proverbs 21 and 2 real quick. I appreciate y'all. You know, my, my lighting is like, it's like, um, is, 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 is off. We need some more lights, but, <laughs> but I need to stand more than I need to be sitting down. So, but we'll get the light. I don't want to add another light in here. So we'll find something. We'll work on something. But I appreciate y'all patience. We're getting it together. Because I'm using, now I'm using the same camera as as I use at the church. Most of the time you can't tell. I mean, this is a very good quality camera. You just can't tell because it's so zoomed back so far. But the but the lighting's off a little bit. Okay, so in Proverbs 21 and 2, it says, Every man's right, I'm reading Amplified. Every man's uh, way is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs and examines the heart of people and their motives. Right? So going back to the story when I was twisting scripture, and I remember what it was because dealing with the it was dealing with Moses, and it was and I never really said I may have said it before, but it was dealing with Moses parting the Red Sea, right? And so I was using the scripture like it within like I was doing um, what is it, like donations, like <laughs> donations. It was, it was doing tithes and offerings, and I was talking about how you know raise your raise your hand up, right? Just as, as the Lord raised His tithe, the, it says Moses raised up his staff, right? And the and the Red Sea split. God's going to open up, you know, a window and an opportunity for you. That's that's against scripture, right? That's not scriptural, right? So that in itself isn't true. And so for me, that's really shameful to me. That like convicts me deeply now. But when I said it, my motive for that was trying to be slick. Right. Trying to say something that maybe people haven't said before. And because you don't get a lot of opportunities back then as a young minister, you're a lay minister. You don't get a lot of opportunity to speak. So when you go and speak, you're like, man, this is my chance to speak. So let me say something that's, uh, you know, um, creative or what have you. And if it, it may be created, it may be the oohs and ahs, but it's not scripturally correct. Amen. So in that moment, my motive, right, in my eyes, it seemed like it was right. Because I'm just trying to be liked, understood, and appreciated. So my motive was like, it was pure in my eyes. That's as the scripture says. Every man's way is right in his own eyes. It was right in my eyes. But when, but when checked with the Holy Spirit, you know, as the Holy Spirit gets involved, no, your motives are saying that you're seeking something, right, in, a, in an irresponsible way. That's not a responsible use of scripture. That's not how you use that scripture. That's out of context. Right. And a lot we see it a lot of times. All right. And, and we see this often. And it may be because of this reason. So that may not be something you would see or notice. You may notice from the outside, like, man, that don't make no sense. Or like, yeah, I get that. I, I, can, I can be involved with that. Yeah. Amen. Right. May the Lord, you know, open up a window for me and split open, you know, and give me, you know, um, deliverance from my enemies and financially and all these things. Yes, I'm ready for that. Right. But then you're like, that's not a correct use of scripture. You may not know in my heart, I was just seeking some attention. But then I got on the slippery slope. You see how easy that it was? But if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to check us, then we'll continue to do more things. Right? Think about that. If the whole church erupted in all these oohs and ahs, and I say, oh, man, that's what I got to do? Bet. Right? And then I keep doing some more. And I do more. And then you think about how far off we become. All because I just wanted to be liked and approved. There's a lot of people out there, I will guarantee you, there's a lot of preachers, even on television right now, 
that may, be, may, may have experienced the same thing. And they've done it for so long, that's all they know. And they teach incorrectly. They, they don't uh, use an, an appropriate, they don't have an appropriate use of scripture because they're trying to seek something for themselves. And then they're teaching masses of people the same thing. When they're teaching, really it's not from a position of glorifying the Father. It's about edifying themselves. So think about the type of spirit that begins to go out from the church. Think about the type of spirit that goes out when they under, when the spirits understand that this person over the church and the flock is not there to protect this flock. And it's not there to, it's not there to glorify the Father. Think about what dev devastation can happen. I've seen some devastation in churches when the pastor's not correct in their behavior and conduct or they're teaching something incorrectly. The damage that's begin that that's that happens because the shepherd of, of that now we know the great the good shepherd, right? We know we're talking about Jesus, but when we're talking about the shepherd or sheepdog that's over the, the flock, when they aren't where they need to be, much damage can happen in the body of Christ where we're not focused, right, on studying and learning how to be disciples of Jesus, glorifying God in what we do. How do we, how do we help God to be glorified so that in other places, in our, in our homes, right, in our jobs, and when we're driving, everywhere we go, everywhere you go, you can be an agent for bringing glory to God in everything and everywhere you go. Amen? It's not just on Sundays and on Wednesdays. It's not just, even with the PB&J challenge, right? It's, it's everywhere, like everywhere, everything, I, all, every day, all day. I can have a conversation with somebody and, and make them have, bring a smile on their face. I can stop and be like, somebody says something and they're hurt, like, hey, you, you, know, you don't mind if I pray for you, do you, right? Bam, right? Every day I can do something to the glory of God, bring, bringing more See, and this is why in Matthew 5, right, is we're letting our good works like a light to shine because then it brings more illumination to God and who God is. Some people may never even heard of God, right? Not in the sense of like heard like detailed messages about him or seen his love in action. There are a lot of people like with the PB&J challenge. There are a lot of people that in one of those 84 sandwiches that you can make, when you give them out, they may have never experienced or seen the true love of God just in a sandwich, right? It may not feed them for a whole lifetime, but I'm extending some goodness. Let them know that God loves you and he's still thinking about you, right? And God can use you to do that just with a sandwich. It doesn't have to be much to mean much to somebody. So then, see, a lot of us get in trouble because we're trying to do something big. And all we're looking at is the big stuff. If it's, if it's not big, then I don't want to do it. Amen? Come on, y'all. How many times have we done that? When I can say I can just do a little bit. Amen? So a lot of this comes where I got to check myself, right? 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Let's go there real quick. And then I'll share with you give you an example of what I did and then we'll close out because it's getting dark my window is open that's how I got most of this light in here but it's getting darker you know it's not good because I'm dark already <laughs> all right so in 2 Corinthians 13 5 he says here examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith prove your own selves right no um know ye not your own selves how that Christ Jesus in you except ye be reprobates so what we're doing here and what we need to do is take time to examine ourselves to see where we're at and our motives and asking the Lord, like, sometimes we'll know, like, mm, this probably ain't the right reason why, right? I, what I'm doing is not the right thing. And there's other times when God will, will tell you, like, no, that's not right. There's times when he's like, you know, uh, see if I be in the faith. You know, lately, one of the last lessons I've been learning is, you know, to overlook an offense. It's to my glory. Like, like, that'd be one time, like the scripture says, right? That's the only time like we talk about your glory. But the Bible talks about how it's to your glory to overlook an offense. How many times do we try to fight and argue with someone to prove them wrong, to prove our point, right? To be, to one-up somebody. Like, it's to your glory. God, I mean, God will tell me, help ain't worth being mad. Is, it, is, is, this, is this situation worth being mad over? Like, no. Is this situation worth worrying over? No. Okay, well, let it go. It's to your glory to overlook it. 
But ultimately, even when it's to my glory, it's to the, his glory. Why? Because now I'm seeking peace between me and another person. I'm seeking an opportunity to continue a godly relationship. Still being able to partner and to work with somebody, whether that's my wife, whether that's a friend, a coworker, whoever. When we have these opportunities to say, look, let me examine myself to see if I'm in the faith. Sometimes, I'm going to be honest, man, there's a lot of things that we may talk about or we may experience that are not worth repeating or trying to correct somebody about. Some things you're like, no, oh, that ain't worth it. You know, some people, I, I, I talked with somebody uh, recently, right? And it's like, I realized I wanted to correct them, but it was like, that's really who they are. Like, they really think like that. So I may need to come and have a different approach. It may not be for me to say it because this is where they're at. So then I may need to have a different approach than trying to prove somebody wrong. Because a lot of people, unless they're walking in complete humility, will not admit that they're wrong. They'll fight you before they prove before they will admit that they're wrong. So I, we got to take this time to examine ourselves. So let me share this. You need to create this EBP, right? Create an EBP. This is what I did. And this is what I've done as a young minister concerning women in my relationship with women. I mean, I was young, just like, well, I think I shared that, that link. It was like 2007 I developed it. But I I lived it in 2004, 2005 when I was in South Korea. It was the time when I was, I have never in my life been more sexually uh, tempted in my life. And like when I got out of that place after the, first, the year I was there, and I got out of there and got on that plane going back from Seoul, going back home, because then I was going back to Hawaii. I was moving to Hawaii. Man, I cried. I cried on the plane because I made it. I was like, Lord, I made it. I mean, I, I cried real man tears because I made it out of that place without touching another woman. It was, it was, oh my gosh, it was crazy. But one of the things I had to do with E was I had to examine myself. I had to check my motives. I had to know when temptations was too high for me, right? Because a temptation is something that you want to do. You know, like I told y'all before, you can't tempt me smoking, right? Can't tempt me with no drink, right? That's maybe somebody else's temptation. Right. So I have areas in my life where I can be tempted. Right. So even now, like there are places, there are temptations that I have to be like, that can't be a part of my life. Or I can't, I got to have some boundaries somewhere. Right. If I want to remain pure before God, not just saying, see, it's not even about me being pure in my relationship with Yolanda, with my wife. Right. It's about being if I'm faithful to God, I'm going to be faithful to her. Right. If I examine myself to see whether I be in the faith, if I'm faithful to him, I'm going to automatically be faithful to her because that's my relationship to him. I'm going to automatically right, be an opportunity. Right. And like automatically it'll be an opportunity for me to be served faithfully. So that's the goal. It's not just me saying I want to live faithfully for my wife. Yes, I do. But I want to live faithfully for him. So how do I live in such a way? See, some of y'all, y'all messed up right now because y'all ain't, y'all, some of us ain't heard that before. But so, so how can I build such a life that will be faithful to him? This is how I live. So then it's like, okay, I know that I can't have certain conversations with women. women. I can't be in certain places. I can't be alone with women, right? Certain things you got, you got to know, like, no, you're not doing this. No, I'm not doing that. Or, hey, do you, do you want to stay at this party? No, because I know where I can go, right? We can never get to a place where you say that I, I'm, I, oh no, I can't fall. Because the Bible says when you think you, when you think you're arrived, when you puff yourself up, that's when you're going to set yourself up for a fall. Mark says in Galatians, right? So you begin to set yourself up for some problems. When you get to this place where you seem like you're too, um, you begin to deceive yourself and then you set yourself up for a fall. Amen? Right? So then you have to get to this place where you continually examine where you are in God. It's, it's, it's okay when you examine yourself to say, I'm weak in a certain area. That's completely okay because you have greater awareness. The awareness, like in 2 Timothy 2.22, right? It talks about how Paul tells Timothy to run, right? Flee from useful lusts and what things to run toward. So I'm running away from them. I have to be wise and say, I got to run away from them. I will not, in a temptation, ever say that I'm strong enough to make it. I am not. And there are many times when I have told people that I am not strong enough to make it. I can't. There was a time when I told my wife, um, my previous marriage, 
right? There was a woman, our next door neighbor, just tempting me like crazy, man. And I mean, and I was doing all my best to fight it off. Like, but it was like it almost it was it was crazy because I, I wouldn't see her a lot. But then all of a sudden, like for a week, a week and a half period, I would see her everywhere. And there was times when she was drunk, bumping them against me, she was doing all kinds of things. And I was like, look, one day with tears in my eyes, I was like, I don't think I have the strength to tell this woman no one more time. Right. And she was about to get mad at me till she saw I was crying. I was serious. Like, look, I am trying <laughs> to do what's right. But this temptation, I cannot continue. I can't fight. And I'm sure a woman, a wife may not want to hear that, but I don't know what else to do. And in the moment, I didn't know what else to do or say. I'm like, I'm trying to live right. But I, I don't know if I could if I can continue. Right. Holding on. You got to know that it's OK to say, I, I you know, that's my area. I, I, you know, and, and so I try to do things to protect myself. So, so examine. B is to build, right? B is for build. Bob the builder. You need to create systems, strategies, rules, boundaries to make sure that you can stay safe. You protect you and you protect the other person. Everybody isn't out to, everybody isn't out to uh, deceive and trick and have bad intentions. Sometimes people just get together and something just be happening. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all been in them situations, right? You have some long-term friends, somebody you knew, all of a sudden the, the, the stars align just right, however you want to say it, right? Things just seem to happen. And you fall into something. Like, no, I ain't what I'm trying to fall into. I ain't trying to fall in no ditches. So I got to build these things. I got to build. And sometimes the rules that you create for yourself may seem harsh. And it may seem harsh to other people. And you can explain, I don't owe them an answer, but I do tell, I don't have to explain myself in detail. Like these are just things, some things I do, some people I just tell them no and it's no in this period. Like I'm not doing that. But I remember when I was, um, um, after my divorce, you know, somebody wanted to come to my house and watch movies, one of my coworkers. And I told her no, right? We lived in the same city, lived pretty close to each other. And she was like, you know, do you, you know, can there be a day, you know, you single, I'm single, right? There ain't nothing going on between us, right? Do you mind if we kind of watch the movies together? I was like, no, I ain't doing that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why? Because even when I was single, I still knew, and this is why I didn't want to date, because then you still know that there are relationships, right? I, where where this going to lead to? I already know who my wife going to be. So why am I going to date somebody or have somebody at my house having sex when I ain't supposed to, right? Like, I'm not doing that. Like, no. Like, we can have a professional relationship. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to protect me. This is for me. Right. And sometimes you got to protect yourself. There have been times like even during that time where I just cut people off completely. Like I just stopped talking to them. Right. And later on, I apologize. Look, this is where I was. Right? You may not be there, but that's where I'm at. I'm trying to protect me. And sometimes I, I got to allow. Right. If I'm trying to please God and be faithful to him, then that means I will be willing to set a standard that allow me to do that. Right. If it if it if it may may it disrupt a relationship or a friendship that I have with somebody to do so, I want to please God. I'm not going to be disrespectful or be offensive intentionally to hurt people. People may take my actions offensively. Right. Because I'm saying no, I'm just creating a boundary. They may be offended by that. I'm creating a boundary, you know, but I'm doing it for the glory of God so that I can continue to seek his glory because I'm his representative. You are his representative. And as representatives, we have the opportunity to continue to bring glory to his name. And I don't want to shame him because of my conduct and behavior. Amen. There'll be people that say things about you just like here, right? Some people, like we're talking about with Jesus, some people said he was a good man. Some people said he wasn't, right? Now, that may not even be true, but it may be based on their perspective. That's different than me giving them some fodder or something to, to prove them right or wrong. Amen. So then lastly, uh, P, and then we'll close because I'm getting darker and darker here, is to, to protect. Protect you, right? Fight for it. Fight for you. Sometimes it's hard because you're looking someone in the face and you're telling them, this is my boundary. This is my line. This is the line to keep me safe to make sure, right? I'm, or I'm doing this to protect you. There were times when, I, like most times, I would not be in a room with a lady by myself, right? And this was, especially when I was in the military, because I was like, one accusation, dude, by the time they found out that you didn't do it, man, half your career is over. So much stuff would happen. I'm not doing that, right? If I'm going to be alone, 
like my job, it, there was me and there was another female we're working with, right? Somebody else is going to be here to be able to witness what's going on. I'm creating a system. I got to protect it. I got to fight for it. Because every day, y'all, y'all go outside. Every day. Right? I'm looking outside because my window is right there. Literally, it's open. My blinds are open. But every day, there is someone looking to destroy and assassinate your character. Do you, the Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Nothing better, right? There's nothing he likes more than seeing drama and chaos. If you think about people, right, one of the largest names uh, in the in the African American church right now, right, going through all type of scandal right now. All type, like Satan will want nothing more. He wants nothing more for that to go on. Somebody that's been preaching the gospel for decades, right? And all of a sudden, these accusations, that's nothing, there's nothing more, right? And we don't know if the accusations are true or not, right? There are accusations, things that have been said. I, I don't know all the details. I haven't kept up with the latest happenings. There are things, oh, there are things going on. It's just not in the news, but there are some things that are going on. But he wants nothing more than an opportunity to discredit him, Right in the name of Christ. I don't want to be in the situation where I'm giving him reason to do that. And I pray that you don't either. Because you may have bad motives. Now, this isn't everything I'm saying has nothing to be associated with this with this pastor. Because most of y'all know the pastor I'm talking about. Right? Nothing to do with that. Right? Because I don't know all the details. I'm not behind those closed doors. I don't know what happened. Can't speak to it. I'm just saying that that's what like situations like that. There's nothing more that he wants to shame the name of Christ through his people, all right? So then we do our very best as we are uh, our jars of broken clay to continue to look to the perfect one who can mend us and heal us, right? And provide for us, amen? All right, what questions y'all got for me? I'm looking nice and dark. All right, so uh, EBP, right? You wanna examine yourself and you will do this continually. This is not something that you just do uh, once or twice, you know, and, and call it good for a week. I mean, it's throughout the day that you're you examining yourself throughout the day and your relationships. Maybe assess them. All right. Sometimes like, man, I need to do better in this relationship. You know, I think about that with one of my stepchildren. Right. I'd be like, oh, you know, throughout the day, I'd be like, mm, you know, I, I probably should handle this better. Or like before, definitely lately, like like before, like I need to make sure I'm this way. Like there's some things. I need to make sure I'm doing or I'm doing intentionally because my flesh may not want to. Yeah, you know, we, we look for our flesh to want to do right. Your flesh is not your partner, not it's your partner in crime. It's your partner in sin. It's your partner in indulgence. It's in your it's your partner in all the evil, but it's definitely not your partner in Christ. You can guarantee that your flesh will do what it wants to do and send you straight to hell and not even care about it. Eating a twinkie and a donut all the way down. Come on. So you want to make sure right, that you continue to assess where you're at. Assess it throughout the day. Where am I at? You know your issues. How can I be intentional to be more faithful or godly in this moment? How can I be more like Christ right now? What can I be doing that God can be pleased with? Right To, to really stretch yourself. Like in this season, dealing with one of my stepchildren, in my season... How can I use that opportunity to show more love, to show more grace and not lean on my flesh, right? My flesh be like, don't deal with him. I don't want to deal with him. I don't want to talk to him, leave him joke alone, right? But then I'm just keeping it 100. My, my, my flesh is saying, well, Christ saying like, hey, treat them as if they never wronged you. That's forgiveness, right? Show them love, show them grace, right? I think about that. I need to be more engaging, right? Well, one of them, I definitely need to be more engaging on because it's still my stepchild, whether, you know, wherever they may be right now there's work that i have to do that's on my part regardless of what they doing i gotta do my part amen so i have to continue to examine myself build systems in place sometimes between examine and build is repentance lord forgive me for what i've done and how i've acted let me build right maybe i, I maybe i was teaching maybe my preaching is is to show people who i am as opposed to who you are your preaching may be different when you want to glorify him as opposed to glorifying yourself. And it's, it's okay to, to identify that now so that you can get it right for later. Amen? 
Amen. All right. And then you want to make sure you protect it. You, you've taken time to examine it. You take time to build it. Then protect what you build. You know, protect you, your heart. You know, sometimes, you know, out of our hearts are, come out all this stuff that will that will defile us. They're vile thoughts and desires and actions and things. So we want to check that. Amen. OK, y'all, I appreciate y'all joining me. Y'all have questions, comments, anything, any parting shots. I believe uh, tomorrow. Uh, Yolanda has um, the ladies, you know, their life club women's meeting, right? Amen. So it's Thursday nights now at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you want to be a part of it, it's on Google Meet. Uh, I don't, we have a, a I don't, I didn't post the flyer yet. So I don't know, if, I didn't know if the flyer was good. So we need to have a talk. So I sent it to her, but I, I don't know if we talked about the flyer anymore. Love thinking about it. So that may be on me because I didn't follow up. So I'll take that. Right. So, um, so it'll be on. It'll be tomorrow. Also, they're going through the book "Cling" by Kim Cash Tate. Uh, so there, there's weeks where there's videos and not, but we do not tape those. We tape them, but they're only for the internal use. So we don't, we don't publicly or post those, so that individuals can, ladies can share their hearts and their, uh, you know, contents of their heart and where they're at. And for our men's study, I don't even know where the book is. I slant, I put it somewhere. I think it's over here. Hold on. No, it's not there. I don't know where it's at. Okay, so for a book, we're doing Stand Strong, a devotional by um, uh, by Our Daily Bread. So we just go over whatever on that day. So we have some great studies, and that's on Saturdays at 8 a.m. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let us know. We're going to pray, and then we're closing out. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this opportunity you've given us, Lord God, in your word. We just pray that you'll continue to instruct us, Lord God, and help us, Lord. May we continue to examine ourselves and see where we're at, Lord. Whether our motives are pure or right, Lord God, whether we're trying to glorify ourselves, seeking our own glory, or glorify you, Father. We want to live lives that honor you, Lord God, God honoring and God pleasing, Lord God. We want to glorify your name, Lord, and we, there's so many ways we can do it, Father. Continue to show us and teach us how we can do that in little small ways, Lord God, to glorify your name and bring uh, more illumination to you and what you're doing in the world through each of us, Lord God. I just ask that you'll continue to help those, Lord God, that are in need of help, Lord God, be a, a provider, be their strength, Lord God, be their protector, Lord God. Lord God, we just pray that you'll help them in every way. Father, we love you and we thank you so much. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you listen to this word and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, you say, hey, you know, I want to know more about being a Christian. Please feel free to shoot us a message. We have free materials that we would love to share with you and talk to you about what it means to be a Christian and a, a disciple and follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have a question about anything else, you don't have to belong to our church. You don't have to pay any money to receive any type of help. So please reach out to us. If you need assistance, we'll help you the best way we can. Prayer, definitely praying. But if we need, if you need something, please let us know. We are here to help. Amen. So we'll put out some more information about the PBNJ challenge. But until the next time, keep looking to the hills. God bless you all. We love you. Take care.